welcome to the Gracie Academy. He don't Gracie, Henry Gracie. In 1993, our father created the Ultimate Fighting Championship to showcase the effectiveness of jujitsu to the world. And if you would have told him, Hario, in 19 years, women will be fighting in the cage and will be keeping it realer than many of the men, he would have said you're crazy. And that's exactly it, is that him, along with so many other men, Dude. would say, no, there's no way. Dana White until last year said absolutely Correct. out of the question. Everybody, no, even me, I never imagined it. But you know what the crazy part is? All we have to do is be exposed to yes. how good a woman can fight. Yes. And then you say, okay, it makes sense. And many people were exposed to watching Ronda fight in all her strike force events and you know, even before that. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the bottom line. And when the women in the cage can choke out every spectator in the audience, <laughs> It makes sense that they fight. You know what I'm saying? Let them keep it real. Let them do their thing. Rhonda and Liz. Ho! Oh! That was good. That was well, good. tell us the emotional. When you were there watching, because you have been training with Rhonda recently, the connection is good, keeping it real on the highest level. When you were I watching, was watching Canada. It, I was watching it in Canada. But it was great. It was amazing. And I, meet, I was training with Rhonda a little bit. Yes, I had the privilege of rolling with her and just feeling the power and the technique. But I'm not, I did not prepare Rhonda for the UFC. I didn't teach her her first arm lock, guys, let's be clear. Yes. Okay? We just went over some little things. She's trying to keep it playful and flow and just do techniques. Yes. But she has a whole team from Edmund to all those guys that train her. And, you know, she's been training for 35 years. And she's, you know, not, she's 25. After he don't roll Rhonda the first time, I said, yo, how was it, bro? He's like, dude, she's ridiculous. <laughs> her arm locks are crazy. Mad credit. So we're gonna move on. And there are some other things. After this UFC, of course, everyone wanted the Ronda breakdown, they wanted to be analyzed, they wanted to talk about that choke defense, amazing. But there were equal, if not more, requests for this Kenny Robertson, Brock Jardine, crazy submission. Um, I don't even think it has a name, you know? And, and, and Kenny, I guess, gets qualified to name it. Although it has been used in MMA once before. I've seen a video of that, I don't know what event. This hamstring ripper, knee hyperextender, Everything stretcher, we'll call it the ham ripper just for namesake for today. And um, it was crazy. So after nearly getting caught in this arm and guillotine by Brock Jardine, Kenny beautifully defended it, passed the guard, got on top, took the back, was attacking from the back for quite a while. Nice back attack. Until they ended up where Brock was on all fours, like this. And Brock is a very common defense from here, is to stand up, like get up in a high tripod, like one, put the leg up, two, and then kind of shake out the back right here and just try to back out of it. That's what he was trying to do. But Kenny had deep hooks, initially had nice deep hooks in the legs, and then when Brock put his leg up a little bit wide and straight right here, Kenny pushed off his hand, got this heel, pulled it straight, and then it ended up from here, basically. Deep, deep hooks, a lot of hip pressure, and pull, and you see him tap. And for sure, that was the first time Brock has been caught in that technique. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's something that you have to get caught in to respect, you know? And, 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 and people are confused. They want to know what the defense is. Well, the defense is no, number one. Well, the defense is not giving your back. Yes. Yeah. In general, you almost deserve to lose if you give your back. And that kind of goes the same for Rhonda, too. She gave her back, which was a mistake, and we saw that, and we'll get into that in a moment. But giving right. her back, we already know it's not a good thing. So that's the first defense. The second defense is when someone's on your back, now that this submission has got the, the widespread, I guess, exposure that it, that it needed, when someone's on your back, if you're going to stand up, you just got to be careful. If your foot is within grabbing range right there, it makes complete sense. Well, it's just great because now people are going to be a little hesitant to want to get up yes. and tripod out. Changes everything. So mad respect for that. And people are wondering what the injury was. You said that uh, our friend Brendan yes. spoke to him. Yeah, he, uh, it's a, I guess he hurt his knee. Yeah, so I was, thought it would be more of like a pain, well, of yeah. the shin into the hamstring, but I think that the actual knee doesn't bend that way. Yeah, it was a little angular on the pull, and so it could have torn something in here a little bit, who knows? Yeah, it all depends on, I think it would change from individual to individual. If you have very tight hamstrings, you tap from the hamstring. If you, if you have relatively flexible hamstrings, then you tap from possible ligament separation in the back or in the side of the knee. So it's always going to go to the weakest point or the most, or technically the tightest point is where the pressure is going to be released Which because that's where, it, that's where the energy generates and then pops, you know? And the tightest is the weakest. Dang. It can't be too tight. Yeah, so that was pretty major and um, I can't wait to catch someone in that next time I take the back because this is a very common thing where people get up on this, on this tripod situation and mess it up. You're going to do that for real? I'll catch someone, bro. I won't. 
I'll ham rip someone. I won't do that, but I will be aware of it. I will keep my eye open from now on. Do I? Especially with you. Let's so, talk about it. So, um, standing, Rhonda closes the distance. Yes. Beautiful answer. She's great. She always entrance. does. Yes. So she closed the distance, and then she got her head and arm throw that um, she does. So if she steps and jab steps in, sometimes she has it over. This time she had her hands under, so she had the head and arm trapped. And then they stepped in, and they ended up in the corner near the cage. So it was the back against the cage. And how Liz took her back was, it was actually quite beautiful. So they had the head and arm situation back towards the cage. Liz tried to catch Rhonda's arm right here with her leg, step over and try to, try to do this. It was unsuccessful, so after a few attempts at that, you see Rhonda attacking this arm, and she did this both in the initial headlock and in the headlock from the side mount where she was grabbing her leg here. Um, same idea, she's trying to isolate this arm to trap, because Rhonda has incredible base, okay? Of course, second to none. So her base was ridiculous until she came in to catch the arm, and that's where her knees came together, and at that exact moment, Liz pushed off a wall. Imagine a wall right here, so she kicks off the wall, which gives her force to knock Rhonda back down. Boom. And now she's on top right here. And from this top position, you start to get up. Go Rhonda ahead. let go of the arm and started to go to her knees to get up. Liz shot the hook in. The and now back she hook. Shot the back hook go first. Back. Yes. Go back out. If she would have thrown the overhook, which is more common, and, 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 and she would have gotten rolled over again. So, so much respect right here for as Rhonda was getting up, the clever back hook. It's the, it's the cross control. I have the head here, and for sure she has the hook there. And that messes up my ability to throw to this side. And then this is all happening, and then she threw the other hook. Boom! And that's when it started to get pretty sticky here. Okay? And now the arm already came off the head. Yes, yeah, so now they end up this over-under. And as soon here. as they land, keep your over-under. Yeah. As soon as they landed right here, Rhonda immediately and correctly tried to remove the hook and try to slide her off right here. The problem is, Keep the hand heels a little tighter. Mm -hmm. This hook was not only tight, but the fact that Liz had the underhook made her. It's another anchor. Yeah, even if I let this go, let this go. I'm not gonna be able to throw heel on off right now because he's stuck right here. You see, there's an underhook, and it's called cross control. Anytime you have an underhook, you want to at least have the opposite leg hook. So the fact that she had this hook and this underhook made her not rollable this way. So her hook stayed in place, boom. And then eventually, while she's fighting the hands right here, uh, Liz went for the neck. Boom. And she, she never had the throat. It was never this clean. Yeah. Maybe for one split second and the chin immediately tucked in because if once you have the throat, it's pretty tough to hide the chin. Very different. Inside there. But so, nonetheless, the chin got inside. And Rhonda did a great job of tightening the chin and she used both of her hands to push the, the choking elbow up onto her chin. So she was very much turned to end up in this type of situation here. So through here and she you know, she's balancing all these things. She's trying to fight the hooks. She was fighting the hip up under her chin to make sure it never got under. Now this, and this palm to palm grip, Liz is pulling it. It's for sure, this is choking. Um, can you make it wider base right here? Because the hooks are cooling out. But wider, pulling into the mouth. And I guess uh, Liz's arm yes. had bite marks. At this point, or during the full lockup. Go ahead, she Yeah, uh -huh. the whole time, full mouth bite on the arm. That's cool, it's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, it was very nice of Rhonda not to bite down too, you know? Yeah. She just kind of kept her mouth relaxed, not to it hurt. It pushed Rhonda's down. mouthpiece out of the way, and the bite marks are there from just the pressure of the lock. So, um, from the palm to palm to she switched to a full lock. Now, right here, Rhonda could have pulled the hand off the head right here, but she didn't. And instead, she was smart and she fought for the foot. When I went here, Liz is here, she actually pulled the foot off. Oh. And the reason Liz falls is because Liz did not have the underhook anymore. Yes, which made her <laughs> cool. So that was, um, we were talking, Hito and I were talking about how fascinating how, you know, Rhonda was just, it was a bad situation. Everyone knows that. But she was so careful in selecting what she was going to focus on. Whether she was going to be fighting the hands, clearing the chin, or clearing the hooks. And she, her ability to choose the right fight. Correct. Was, was remarkable, was truly, because she was her, man, that face choke that she was experiencing, I would have tapped. Straight up, well, that's crazy pressure on your jaw and on your face, and so it's the most, it's almost more uncomfortable than a normal choke. Correct, but it's not, it, it could put you to sleep, but not really, not, right, not that, hard. Because it was so sideways, I correct. correct. Now, I've choked people and, and put people to sleep with the chin tuck. They go like this, look, keep your chin down, that's different because the chin is in the V of the elbow. This was all what it was. She was completely chin to shoulder almost, and it was on the side of her face like this. So if anything, it's uncomfortable. Yes. And it's just hurting the jaw a little bit. Now I have no heart, you know, so I just tap and stuff like that. I'm like, ah, oh, it's painful. But for her, 
no deal. A little bit of pain on the jaw is worth it. Yeah. And okay. I think it was so cool to see because, you know, there's so many haters out there who are still not giving Ronda the credit she deserves. And almost acting like, yeah, she's in a different league and she's fighting these, these, these other women who can't compete. So it's not that big a deal. You know, Ronda's not that good. These people, are, and it's all, it's all such a lie, you know? And, and for, for Liz to come in and challenge Ronda like she did and create that threat, and then for Ronda to persevere in a situation where most of the guys on the card that night would have tapped that face choke, because that's Correct. how bad it is. I was, when, I didn't even really know who Liz was. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, yeah, how does she qualify? Right. And I even saw, like, her little highlight reel of some of her fights, but now it makes sense. Yeah. You know? Just Major you know, threat. Everything she did was overall how she escaped the headlock by using the fence and rolling out her timing. Liz is an amazing fighter as well. Yeah, and, and it was funny because you hear all the up pre-fight hype for, for Ronda, and, and, and she's, she gave the most credit to Liz going into the fight as well. Like, ever. Correct. Ronda, Ronda held her in the highest regard. She no, did her homework. No, did her homework, and nobody respected and, and feared, uh, I guess, Liz's potential more than Ronda. And, and it shows. She respected. She prepared for it. She got caught by surprise. She overcame. And then she ended up passing the guard where she um, got the, the headlock after the leg lock attempt. She spun out and ended in the headlock after a few, you know, the headlock control, punching in the face. And a lot of people were saying, Henner, you know, is that headlock that Ronda had her in escapable? You know, is it, how, because we never, it's not common to see headlocks like that held in MMA for that long and that many punches. That, no. it's not very common. I don't remember the last time I saw. And it makes sense that it'd be Ronda to do it because headlocks are a huge part of judo and she does them so tightly and so effectively that she was able to fully immobilize and do a lot of damage from there. And people were like, man, is it escapable? And the answer is yes, it is escapable. But like anything, it's also possible that the situation at the moment could right. be impossible to escape. Like you could, you know, go learn on raceuniversity.com. You can go learn from Henner how to escape that headlock. And then you can still be stuck. Yes, that is true. But if you do care to know the escape for this type of more head and arm control judo headlock, it's a blue belt stripe two, Gracie University, lesson number 11, if you care. Cool? So that being said, let's talk about this arm lock. So then, after the headlock, she jumps over to the mouth, beautifully, boom. So from the mouth, real quick high mount, and she hugs the arm, hugs the leg, spins and sits. But look, as soon as she sits, this hand lands right here. Liz, sure. Liz did her homework as well. She Liz was already here. here. And immediately, um, Ronda lays back, Liz sits up, sits up, right. Right. What's that? Um, it was, um, yeah, so Ronda lays back and pulled hard. It's almost was, like Ronda's pull a little bit brought Liz up. A little up. bit brought her up, yeah. And Ronda was hanging onto this leg here for balance as well for a quick second, which also somewhat helps the get up here into the guard. And so Liz has her anchors and started stacking Ronda, but Ronda's leg and leg use here in this and the base manipulation is so good that she used the leg, the same leg grab that helped Liz get up, she used it to tip her back over and end up back in this yeah. situation. As easy it is, as it is to get up, it's easy to also fall over and lose your balance. So now this was the part right here, of course, we've seen her here so many times and feet crossed, which everybody's asking, can you cross your feet? Yes, we cross our feet all the time. But then sometimes we don't cross the feet, we do both. Right, but explain, some people were, were questioning, Henry, is it okay to cross the feet in the arm lock? Rhonda does it so beautifully, can we do it? And the answer is yes. Ideally, if his arm is out there like this, open, and I cross now, he can maybe throw both my legs off his head. So we always teach to cross under the elbow, which of course, if someone is defending, keeping their arm from being ripped off, they're gonna hold hands, which means their elbow's off the ground, which means that crossing is very easy. Cool? Very now, cool. so from here, it's very difficult to pull the arm back because it's like a figure of four. It's locked up, it's caught, and it's like a nice so it's, anchor it's on It's almost my like thigh. you're fighting yourself. The more you pull, I'm pulling in your own leg. And pulling too much could lead to, once again, losing my balance and you climbing up again. So we don't want that. So it's amazing how Rhonda just stopped, got up, boom. And remove this this arm came out. Yes, because once you get up, the anchor has no more value for me. Correct. Reach right here and wait Correct. for the legs. Yes. But before she spun the leg back, look what she did. She went for the arm hug on this wrist. This, yes. The arm that she wants. She hugs the arm that she wants, and it kind of a little bit lifts this one up, and now she spun right back. And the hand was out of the party. Yeah, now there's no more hand. Now it's only a matter of time. She laid back with that hug. She double cool. wrist grabbed, and it was all day. I wonder what happened to Liz's arm. She was cool. She Did tapped. No, she was cool. No she problem. tapped. No problem. Yeah, you have to tap quick. No. After watching what happened to Misha, she yeah. didn't run a play. You say everybody in general, protect yourselves. It's not worth it. Fight again the next day. Yes, yeah, she had already seen that. Now let's be honest. Go back here. What did you when 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 Liz let when uh, Rhonda let go and Liz was angered, Rhonda let go and came up to the mount. 
So she came up, come up. At this point right here, what did you think Rhonda was going to do and what were you praying for? And what were you looking at and what were you excited about for a quick second, be honest. I thought she was going to switch and like hug and switch to here. Would have been cool. Yes, because you guys... even what happened was super it cool. It was super cool. No matter what happened, it's cool. As but I'm just, asking I'm, from, you know, I'm just asking from you, when you saw her get up, yeah, what, could you imagine the switcheroo? Dang. So, so what was so amazing about this? Besides the fact that, well, they made seven, part of that seventh first round armbar finish, all submissions, all first round history in the making, like on 15 different fronts that evening. And um, the amazing part is that it was an arm lock, and everybody knew it was going to be an arm lock. Yeah, even Liz did. Right? It's like me telling you, I'm going to slap you in the face in one minute, and you still get slapped. Like, you better not even be in this room right now. Right. You know it's mean? so like when you know for sure you're going to be arm locked, it makes it even more I mean, more but impressive. do you even know for sure though? Yeah, and what's crazy is that people act like some viewers are, are hating and saying, yeah, it's so dumb that she does the same move over and over. Yeah. It's, you know, like, no, it's not. People are it's boring. amazing. It's like, he don't say it. It's like, sometimes when we're rolling here, I'll, like, I'm just trying to work a certain aspect of my game and I'll say, hey, I'm going to go to your back and choke you. That's yeah. 10 times harder. Correct. Then catching a random submission yeah. whenever it shows up. It's crazy. Like, it's unbelievable how hard it is. So for her to go out there and, and to know that that's her move and to still people be still getting caught after seven times back to back, mm. it's remarkable. I wonder if she knows any other moves. It's so impressive that when, this is how impressive it is what she's doing right now. That her next opponent, who she goes with, people are gonna say, oh, it's just gonna, if her next opponent does not get arm locked, it was a miracle. Oh my God, her next opponent, even if her next opponent's gonna lose, if she doesn't get arm locked, it's gonna be a miracle. That's how, that's how amazing it is. It's okay, almost, it's almost right now about her next opponent losing. Yeah, even though she's gonna get tapped out, if it's not an arm lock, it's gonna be like that girl. It's almost You're like, already saying her next opponent's gonna lose. It's it. almost like the credit people gave Ken Shamrock for surviving Hoist. Correct. You see what I'm saying? That was a huge victory. It was a huge victory yes. just that he didn't get submitted. Like that's just, we don't amazing. know who her next opponent is. We don't know. Okay, nobody is, um, what's the word? Invincible? No one's invincible, yes. correct. That is true, true correct. story. We're all human beings, but she for sure yeah. is a machine. No doubt. Plus a human. So, the amazing fight, it's great to watch, and I love Armas myself, and just, it's so great to see. Yeah, so that was it, you guys. If you were needing evidence that, that Ronda was the realist on the highest level, the adversity that she experienced, and the, power, the fact that she defended and fought through that choke the way she did, was, um, yeah, it shows that she's okay being on the defensive. Totally okay. She's okay surviving. Yeah. Because usually she's on offense the whole time. So we never had a chance to see that really. Correct. And she admitted it was her most challenging moment in the, in the cage yet. And it was so, the longest fight of her career, which ended in the first round still. Right. Which was cool, but still pretty darn long compared to the last ones. So amazing work. Congratulations. Um, Gracie giveaway winner from last time, Matthew Pratt. Any DVD series of your choice, Gracie Bullyproof, Women Empowered, or Gracie Combatives. Congratulations, bro. You won the Gracie giveaway from the last breakdown. Um, the next Gracie giveaway. Because we have these people, like, this is very crazy what happened right now. Yes. Didn't you get a bunch of texts and tweets? Like, Correct. what's wrong with you guys? Where's the breakdown? It's been two days. Correct. What do you feel about those people? They have a problem. Yeah. We call they it, need help. They it's need very, help. It's very sad. Yeah, we call it GBSA. Gracie Breakdown Separation Anxiety. This is a common symptom amongst Gracie Breakdown fans and followers. And um, you know, it, it, it's actually getting quite bad. When, when 12 hours or 24 hours pass, and we start getting hate tweets and hate texts and hate messages, say, hey, what's wrong with you guys? You guys, are, you guys are slipping, you guys aren't who you used to be. When we start getting that, we know they have the GBSA uh, symptom, and, and it's a very concerning thing for us. So for these people, we have on Gracie University this bonus breakdown Library where every single week, every week of the year, there's a new Gracie sparring video. He don't know myself sparring with students or training partners or a Gracie breakdown. So we kind of break down our sparring. So I'll spar with the blue belt, brown belt here at the academy. Yes. And I'll kind of break down the whole five minute roll. Yes. Of what I'm doing, what's happening, what I'm thinking, which is similar to a breakdown breakdown, because you're just seeing the the our, our thoughts. Narrated sparring. It's really interesting. I learned from watching important. myself narrate it. And we do different types. One hand, two hands tied, blindfolded, fight simulation, all types of sparring that happen at the academy. So if you're in the jiu-jitsu journey, those are very beneficial. And if you just want to watch some fun rolling and some fun submissions and fun rolling here at the Gracie Academy. That's what you want. The Gracie breakdowns, though, we're breaking down actual fights. These are all the fights from back, way back. Yes. I mean, Elu versus Kimura, Elu versus Kato, Hoist versus 
Dan Severin, Hoist and Kima, all the original fights, all the way up until we right. started doing those. Right now we just added Fedor. Fedor and Hungman Choi, one Which of the dopest technical displays. Was it Yes, from the yeah. guard, beautiful little man versus the big man. Fedor was the little man in the equation. This guy, Hangman Choi, for those who don't know, is like seven foot plus and just like, I don't know, 300 plus pounds. The guy is crazy, and Fedor beautifully nice. neutralized, closed the distance. So we break the whole fight down like we do with these, but there's no time limit, and it's a free for all, and we put the whole juice. So each one is a lesson in itself. For those with Gracie Breakdown separation anxiety, go to graciebreakdown.com, look into the breakdown bonus. It's called Breakdown Plus, is the name of that subscription. And what we want to do is give one of those away for free to one of our viewers today, um, especially, hopefully we can give it to someone with the highest level of GBSA yeah. to help them come down off the cliff and, uh, and, and live a happy life going forward, you know? Um, so what's the question of the day? The question of the day is this next fight coming up, I don't know if it's the next one, because there might be one tomorrow, right? After correct, now. correct. But the, the next one. UFC is, uh, the main one that we're looking forward to is Nick Diaz. And GSP. Our buddy Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz is Team Jiu-Jitsu. Yes. So is GSP though. Everyone's Team Jiu-Jitsu. Everybody's Team Jiu-Jitsu since UFC won. Yeah. So we want to ask you guys, who's going to win and how? How? Nick That's Diaz important question. versus GSP. And um, we want you to break down. So leave a comment, subscribe to this channel, like the video, favorite the video, the whole procedure. And by entering the comment, you automatically enter to win the next Gracie Breakdown, which is a 12-month subscription to Bonus Breakdown Library. Yes. It's amazing, my friend. It'll help your problems. Now, real quick, um, one quick talk. Our friend Brendan Schaub, who fought oh. and he won, won by decision, and you were telling me people were having some um, negative attitude. Someone said that there was Brendan Schaub robbed us of an opportunity to see LeVar Johnson knock him out. So what that means is they would have liked to see them boxing. They would have liked to see just a crazy knockout. No, no, they would like to see them boxing. So he can get knocked out. Yes. So they're disappointed that they didn't get to see a knockout. That's yes. it. Yes. And Brendan is a good friend of mine and Henner's, and we've been training a little bit together. And we made it clear, like, dude, don't exchange Ooh, punches dude. because it's too risky. No Now, way. if you have to exchange punches, then go ahead and you have to do it. Yes. You can't take the fight to the ground. But he very clearly took the fight to Beautiful the ground. Beautiful takedown. And control. multiple times control. The fight was stood back up, but this was this was um, not on the main card. Right. This was on Fuel. Yeah. Facebook, whatever. It so was either way. Beautiful great fight. That Brandon displayed the most amazing for people who care about jujitsu and actually know people what the heck is going on. People understand the whole. Not for the crazy people who just want to see a knockout. If it didn't get a knockout, they punch Correct. the TV screen and break their own monitor. Not those people. The people who are chill and understand the art and the science of jujitsu and the Gracie way. Brennan managed distance well, on the most beautiful level. Let's not call it the Gracie way. Call let's it just, way. Let's just call it the safe way. Yes. The, 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 makes, the martial artist makes sense way. Right. The respect. path of least resistance respect, way. Respect, respect, respect. Right? Major. So if, you, if you can avoid getting punched in the face, take the fight down, control, and win. Any beautiful. shots of submissions didn't work out, time ran out. And plus, the UFC these days, they stand the fights up. Why? They like because them. there are still people out there who are just dying to see a knockout. Right, 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 right. So it's okay though. Soon enough, the UFC will maybe shift a little bit. And next thing you know, they'll allow um, 10 minute matches to stay on the ground for Come a while. Don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. The moment. fans, the fans. Yeah. Like Nick Diaz in GSP. You can't stand up that fight right there. Yes. I don't care true. how boring it is. You can't. You know, that should almost be a three 10 minute rounds or five 10 minute rounds. You know what I'm saying? We need to let them go to work. You don't get any excited, you guys. Let's calm down. So, <laughs> Brendan, congratulations. Um, Uriah, beautiful rear-naked choke from the body triangle. Yeah. The choke was, how quickly he entered into it was it magnificent. But what was even more than funny and impressive and amazing was once the homie tapped out, Uriah kept the body triangle and raised his hands. Tacked onto his back and then raised his hands and celebrated from his back. Um, it was funny. It was a good choke. Maybe, uh, yeah, it was amazing. And just to clear up some, um, some muddy water here, the last breakdown that, that I did, Eve was my assistant for that one. He don't wasn't here. Uh, we did a breakdown, Gabriel Gonzaga, Ben Rothwell, and um, we talked about some guillotine choke counters from Ben Rothwell. How to defend in three or four guillotine choke, arming guillotine counters. And then one of Ben Rothwell's coaches, or people who works with him, um, uh, jiu-jitsu coaches, went online and went on record saying like, you know, you know, Henner and breakdowns and the Gracie brothers and doing these breakdowns and criticizing and this and that and saying these things and said some negative things that like, like almost like, yeah, Ben knows that technique. He was sick that day and, you know, was basically condemning me for talking about the incident um, and, and, and explaining what could have been done there. And I want to make it very clear here and for all future breakdowns, whenever we talk about what could have been done in the fight, 
in absolutely no way are we trying to take credit or kind of take away from the people who are in there fighting. Because no matter what anyone says on the outside, they're the ones in there doing it, so they deserve the highest level of respect if you're on the giving or receiving end of that submission. It makes, nobody can talk about that person. Now, the problem is for us to help educate people who aren't in the cage on what they can benefit from those moments, we have to use those examples to illustrate these points. So we're not talking necessarily down or trying to take away from the fighters, no. But we are trying to take away from the moment and the display of jujitsu in the ring. So don't get me wrong, there's, it's totally different. So we, someone can get caught in a choke and there could have been five variables that we have known nothing about. But there could be five techniques that we do know something about that could be of great value to viewers out there. So we find it in, in our job to help perpetuate jujitsu and help people change their lives for the better as this art does. So breakdowns are not to tell the fighter what they could have done and what they didn't do. It's to tell the viewers. It's only for the viewers. What they could take from that beautiful display. Correct. So whenever we talk about a fight, we have as much gratitude for the recipient of a submission as the deliverer. We have been in situations where we have been beaten. Yes. And then after you or my brother or my father say, yo, you could have done this. Right. So, and we, and we acknowledge it. You're right. You could have done that. You're right. Yeah. But in the moment, we dropped the ball, you know? 100%. Cut up. 100%. If you watch any one of our narrated sparring videos as we spar on Gracie University, we look through it and we're correcting ourselves during the roll. Say, so, oh, that was good, but we should have done that. Yes. We could. We could. So we're critiquing ourselves even. And, uh, and we, would, we would invite you guys to do the same. So let's be very clear. It, it's an educational quest on the highest level. And, um, and, and by no way do we mean to offend any fighters ever by our advice and our attempt to help spectators out there who have so much to gain from what's happening in the cage. But no one else is really translating yeah. it for them. Joe Rogan's doing a good job, but that's all verbal. We need someone to show, and, and we're here to do that. So our apologies to everyone. If anyone ever got offended by that, that's never the intention. Okay? So one for all. All for one. If anybody got offended by anything ever, it's not yes, our it's never personal. It's never personal. Ever personal. Cool. Last but not least, Hito has some major seminars coming up. Where are you going? I'm going to Minnesota. This weekend? This weekend. Minnesota. Woodbury, Minnesota. Gracie CTC out there. Hito goes into these seminars. This is a sat it's on Saturday. This is coming up Saturday right now. It's two seminars, right. two two hour blocks. And it's gonna be crazy. It's one is about defending side mount, one is about attacking and side mount and controlling. But I feel like Side mount defense, mm -hmm. like I have it down really well. Well, clearly you displayed that for 20 minutes. Correct. I feel like I've almost mastered it, side mount defense, and, and it's so easy. And that's what yes. I'm going to explain on Saturday. Yes. I, you know, if you want to talk to anybody about surviving the side, like the black belts come into the academy from other schools, and then they, he don't lays down, like, hey, boom, boom. And lays in the ground. And homeboys come up and they attack like they're angry at life. And he goes like this. And his hands are always in the right spot. And you literally feel like you're a white belt, like scratch, nothing. Because he doesn't even like get excited when he's down there. So there's not even an opening. And then what happens? They get frustrated, they make openings, they escape. So this amazing safe, beyond safe hands as he calls it, mm -hmm. this safe side mount procedure is ridiculous. If you can make it out to Michigan, or I'm sorry, Minnesota, make it happen no matter what. I have seminars coming up in Atlanta, Georgia, three seminars in Atlanta in March. And then I'm doing a uh, Women Empowered for the Air Force in April. And then we're doing the Immersion Camp. The Immersion in Camp in Florida. Florida. Some of them don't know what that is. They, just imagine a seminar on the beach, right next to the beach, just a vacation with 100, 150 people, Amazing. us, a bunch of our students. Yes. It's just a party on the beach. Jiu -jitsu, Basically, kayaking, stand up paddle boards, who knows, wave runners. It's a vacation excuse for jujitsu. Volleyball. Vice versa. Every morning we have seminars, every night we have open mat sparring sessions, beach in the middle of the day, family connections. You guys, and I'm talking guys, guys, listen, guys. if your wives are like, no, we can't go, we can't send you the Gracie Academy Torrance to go train for a week, just to have fun and do jujitsu selfishly, I'm not going to let you. You say, honey, I respect you don't want me to leave the Torrance, but let's go to Destin, Florida and spend some time on the beach together, princess. And then once you get her there, you send her off to the shopping or to the beach, and boom, you sneak away to the mat, she doesn't even know you're gone. This is the best family jiu-jitsu vacation in the history, my friends. Three days, Destin, Florida. It's beautiful little panhandle, Emerald Coast. You want to get right in there, you guys. You want to get in there, okay? The last day to register is April 15th, which is less than two months away. The camp is May 17th, 18th, and 19th. Three oh, days, quick. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Just a great kind of refresher of the jiu-jitsu energy. Meet people from all over the world, connect the energy, spar with everybody, have a blast.
Okay? If you can make it, make it happen. If you can't make it, dang. If you can't make it, you make the next one. But it might be somewhere else though, right? It's yeah. true. You never know where it's true. Be, but Destin, Florida is so nice. It's so major. So yes. For more information on that and what you can expect from that, go to GracieEmersionCamp.com. And last but not least, I'm going to be right after it. Since you went on more seminars, I'm going to Idaho. I'm going to Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm going to be in Kentucky and Tennessee and Ohio. Boom! That's what's up. All right, you guys. Hopefully you took some amazing details from these fights we saw today. Thank you for everyone UFC 157 roster. It was truly remarkable. I wonder who the next um, two women are going to be to fight in the UFC. It yes. has to be two new women, and then the winner fights Ronda, right? It can't just be another yeah. girl fighting Ronda. They have, I guess there are 15 or 20 or 30 girls on the, on the roster, 135-pound weight division. Oh, so they have already? It's going down. They have a bunch of girls. Oh, that's going cool. to fight. It's going to go down, my that's friend. That's exciting right there. This is super exciting. Congratulations to Dana White, UFC organization. It's a huge step. And, uh, and for Ronda, for being kind of the, the motivation to make it happen. I know yes. she's a huge part of that. And, uh, and she definitely held it down. So, my friends, we talk a lot. But we know like at least two or three of you care. The rest of you guys, we apologize. Keep it playful.com. Our grandfather's vision was to share the gift of Gracie Jiu Jitsu with people all over the world. Thanks to global internet accessibility and the development of a revolutionary interactive online learning system, his dream came true and his legacy will live on forever. Gracie University. Let us teach you everything he taught us. Get in the shadow. Ah. Right there, he's pulling, he's pulling. He's pulling. Yes, he's blowing. Ah. Oh, oh, my hand. Oh, you got him? Bring the coconut one. Third generation Gracie, he's definitely a one representative. How's that coconut one, Hakai? How you like that coconut one? Yeah. <laughs>